You're still watching Ways. Now, World Population Day is an annual event observed on July 11 every year, which seeks to raise awareness of global population issues. Now, the event was established by the Governing Council of the United Nations Development Program in 1989. It was inspired by the public interest in 5 billion day on July 11th, 1987, the approximate date on which the world population reached 5 billion people. Now, World Population Day aims to increase people's awareness on various population issues such as the importance of family planning, gender equality, poverty, maternal health, and human rights. So, wow, are you seeing those heads? <laughs> <laughs> That's World Population Day mm. today. Mm. Quite interesting. So, uh, no, this is a lot of human beings. <laughs> but this is not normal. Anyway. Well, this isn't normal. But this is Lagos. Yes, but this is, this is not on a normal day. Lagos this is quite populated. Obviously, is a convergence of people uh, for a particular purpose. Well, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, so that's Ooh. it. Today we're talking about population, so we won't really dwell so much on you know the yeah. the numbers and the figures until we bring in our guests. But what okay. did you find for us in the news? Okay, I stumbled on the Nigerian Immigration Service and the impasse they had with the Nigerian about fifty-eight doctors who were making. They made an attempt to travel out of Nigeria today. And what I made of the story is that first, you know, I always talk about imagine, um, the healthcare emergency that we're going to go through in Nigeria after COVID. I didn't even know we we're going to start going through it now. Imagine the British, I'm um, sorry, the, the British government is taking 58 of our doctors in one single transaction. <laughs> Can you imagine? In one single transaction. And you know the pathetic thing? Yeah. The area of expertise needed for this doctor is the one that we really, really need in Nigeria. Mm. People, are the doctors who have expertise in ICU, that is intensive care unit, with, they are really, really minute. And in anesthesia practice, they already got their um, papers and all that. They had, but the one crucial thing that impeded them from being able to travel today was their um, visas. Obviously, we know that Nigeria is closed um, to international flights and commercial flights. And also, for the, um, the British government, the High Commission in Nigeria is closed. So they couldn't obtain their visas. But what so the recruitment... stop them at the airport? Now, so the recruitment, um, the recruitment agency in the UK said, sent them emails saying that they've already gotten them a visa waiver. Whoa. Whoa. Do you understand? From the UK government. And they could proceed to the uh, to, to the, the airport, airport. Wow. and make their way out of Nigeria on a chartered flight, which was subsidized by the recruitment agency. Wow. But now, my, the, the, where I find it, where, the, the worrying part for me was, if there was that kind of arrangement between the UK government and the recruitment agency, don't you think Nigeria, the Nigerian immigration should have been aware. shouldn't be part of yeah. it? So now, the issue is, is it that the Nigerian immigration service was aware of this arrangement? But stylishly precluded <laughs> yes impeded them from travel because of the danger ahead or the part uh, what can you make to travel out of nigeria without a visa to where you're going to do you understand Things or are happening, sure. they it was an oversight but whichever way it is i think it's a plus for nigeria in as much as i'm sorry guys that you affected them but we are losing 58 doctors. Okay, so, How many doctors So do someone have? reached out to me on Wednesday, Wednesday, I think, Wednesday. on Wednesday. And the lady was talking about isolation centers in Lagos. I really, really love the government, you know, to look into, to it. Look into it. She said some things that, yes, they volunteered, you know, uh, they volunteered to work there and all of that. But they were promised to, to be paid certain kinds of, you know, allowances and all of that. So, but now... I think for two months they were not paid and you know it's looking yeah. like you know so there's even an article that was written it's unfortunate mm -hmm. the way nigeria government <coughs> excuse the nigerian government is treating our so doctors. when you see doctors trying to run away from the of country course. you really cannot well, blame them no, i'm not blaming them. no i'm just saying that i'm not blaming them no no i'm not saying you're blaming them i say you really cannot blame them can yeah. you imagine but we are losing 58 doctors mm. in one day and expect to no, lose but more. You are only knowing about 58 doctors because there's a lockdown. I hope you know hmm. that when there was no lockdown, the, what's it called, what's the word now, the proper terminology <coughs> for it, of doctors leaving but, the country, 
is way, way more than that 58 that you're talking about. This I hope you're aware. This is alarming. And I think the government should do something about it. I'm not saying they should preclude them, but I think this is a wake-up call for them to do their They've had thing. many wake-up calls. They've not just taken the calls. Because this is like an emergency. <laughs> We're going to be in an emergency situation very well, soon. One day, Uwa, we'll get to the hospital and there will be no doctor to attend to us. Well, let me take my story. All right. We'll talk about doctor's uh, All right. migration very soon. <laughs> All right, so um, the commissioners, um, sorry, the about 19 states have um, declared their position on the federal government's stance to postpone the school reopening, you know, against this is uh, off of the back of the wasi that they were supposed to take you know they had announced that they will reopen the schools for children in the gs3 ss3 class and i think about primary six or so i'm not sure about the primary but they were supposed to go back to school to take the exams but um um the federal government now came back to say no um they they are going to put a stop to that reopening because of the numbers they're not seeing it going down anytime soon so 19 19 northern states have backed the federal government um, their decision to suspend the reopening. And this was made known in a communique issued in Cardinal State on Saturday following a virtual meeting that where various issues were discussed, you know. And um, I, I think about, so the, the states, Kaduna, Bauchi, Gombe, Niger, Nasara, Adamawa, Taraba, Kogi, Kwara, Kasina, Kano, Borno, and Jigawa states. So those states, the, the 19 commissioners, they attend, 13 out of those 19 attended the meeting and they've said they've, they're supporting the federal government not to reopen schools. So this is actually quite dicey, you know, because I have a son that is in JS3. Oh my goodness, every day so he's always Every day he's always asking, so mommy, what's the yeah. plan? Mommy, what's the oh plan? So I told, I had to tell him yesterday, I said, at some point, you might just have to decide in your head that, you know what? Let me just focus on what is important Being and what alive. I can control now. Because really, I mean, if the numbers are not going down, you really cannot go and expose. But I'd rather have you alive than because or I know. Than say I want to take you to go but, and write an examination. But, oh, uh, you are don't we ready? Think, no, you don't think they could have done it virtually? The exams? Yes. We don't have the capacity to do that. So rather that's than why, them losing a year, why yeah. can't they build that capacity? So, so that's the thing. What what they've had how many months now to look into this thing? I think they should have been if because they just finished their exams in their school and they wrote their exam via Zoom, you know, because you, you have to put on your video to write the exam so the teacher sees that you're the one writing your exams and you're not you're not looking into anywhere to get the answers and all of that. So we don't know if that is possible, but they should just find another way because I don't think schools are ready to reopen. We might eventually have to painfully swallow that losing one year. Oh my goodness. We don't even know it, whether it might even be more than a year. So this is just us hoping. But mine does have resumed school in the UK. Mm, in the UK, right? Yeah. yeah, some of the schools have reopened. She's in year 10 and they've opened school for them. Yeah. But she goes in, I think, three, three times a week. And it's always for maybe like two, three hours. Yeah. yeah. All right, so I think that's all we can take on what's in the news. Devo Okore will join us right after the break to discuss the Nigerian population. Please stay with us. We'll be right back.